Explore the beauty of Nashville with Jody's Journeys, May 29th through June 2nd. Join Jody Griner, your travel guide, and explore the treasures of Nashville. Contact Jody Griner at 641-660-6417. This tour only holds 50 seats. Demand is high. Secure your spot now. Call Jody's Journeys at 641-660-6417. Again, Jody's Journeys is going to Nashville, May 29th through June 2nd. <laughs> Is that your form of head banging or were you just working out the kinks in your neck? Well, back in the olden days when I had beautiful long hair and I would, you know, I could uh, whip it around as I headbanged. It's more like a sway. <laughs> Head swaying. Also, <laughs> full disclosure, I've not had long hair since I was about eight years old. Uh, it's kind of one of the tragic mistakes of my ill-spent youth was uh, long hair that... Um, I don't know. It was the 80s. It was yeah. the early 80s. I'm not sure what I was thinking. Maybe yeah. I wanted to look cool like a, like a rock and roller. Or maybe I just had poor judgment. But uh, <laughs> it did not look like rock and roll hair. It looked like I was a girl. <laughs> That'll happen. Hey, before we go any further, <laughs> we do want to thank our, our headline sponsor for our program, uh, Real Talk with Aaron and Steve. And as you can see on your screen there, it's New Life Community Church in Wellman. I think you know a thing or two about them. I, I do. It's a, it's a church that my wife and I and a couple of crazy friends started <laughs> in Wellman about uh, not quite 17 years ago. If my math is right, September 16 of 2007 was wow. the first Sunday that we had our had our doors open. Okay, and uh, it's it's been it's been something of a ride. Um, we were warned to not start a church unless we couldn't imagine doing anything else with our lives, and we're like, well, we can't imagine doing anything else with our lives, so let's start a church. And uh, it's it's been a ride, and we have we have tried from the very beginning. We have tried to keep it real. Hence, this this uh, yeah. is this a radio show, Steve? This is a video, whatever you want to call it, show. This is a multimedia. Yes, Steve multi Shetler media. That's baby. right. Yeah. Uh, so our our uh, what's the name of our show? Real Talk. <laughs> <laughs> it's so popular. It, it's so popular and everybody's talking about it and that means that we've forgotten the name real talk real talk with aaron and steve we've tried to be a church up in wellman uh where we where we talk real about stuff i remember early on um, we had a couple of, of people who came into the church and were kind of checking us out and several people asked us so what do you do about sin in the church <laughs> That's a loaded question. That is a loaded question. But the answer that I always tried to give was something like, well, first of all, as the lead pastor, I talk about my own. <laughs> yeah. Um, some of it I talk about in public. Some of it I, I save for small group conversations because there is such a thing as oversharing. Yes. Uh, there is oversharing, and we want to avoid that. There's boundaries, and there's times and places, right? But in general, we want to be real. We want to talk about the real stuff because life is too short uh, to to fool around at church. That's I don't know. That's my take. Yeah, and, and uh, that, that transfers over to our program. Yeah, and you enjoyed coming to New Life for seven years or ten years or. Yeah, it was. I think it was in that seven to eight year range, somewhere in there. So yeah, yeah. It's I I say go go to New Life in Wellman if you want a good church. Yeah, and you're not and you don't have a good church already. That's yeah. a, that's one of the places you can go in our area. So yeah, we've we've tried to keep it real, which which means that that uh, when something funny happens, we laugh, but when something sad happens, we cry. 
And I wanted to spend a little time about uh, talking about crying and about grief today. I am okay. certainly not a grief expert. And again, full disclosure, uh, I did not go to seminary or Bible college. I do not have a master's degree in anything, let alone counseling. Um, so I'm, I'm uh, just kind of a guy who's trying to pick up tips and tools along the way for how to do life well. So I don't know a whole lot about grief other than that I feel it sometimes. And I have slowly learned over the course of my many, many years on this earth <laughs> that stuffing stuff inside for too long uh, just doesn't help. You can only stuff so much in there before it just all comes out. <laughs> It either comes and and uh, and somebody has said once that grief is like a balloon. Like remember when you were a kid and you'd blow up a balloon. Maybe you still do this, uh, and you squeeze it on one end to try to make the balloon smaller. But then it just all the air makes a huge bulge on the other end. Okay. And then you yeah. change your grip on the balloon and you try to squeeze it somewhere else. The air is gonna go somewhere. And I think that's true of of grief or really kind of any other pain that you're feeling in your life. You can try to suppress it over in one area of your life and it's going to come out weird in some other part of your life. Yep. Is that, <clears throat> yeah. So so I'm I'm just kind of in the process of trying to to learn to be real about things like grief and not try to be happy all the time, which is weird because I, I prefer <laughs> to be happy. <laughs> yeah. So I've got a little story. Um, I think we've mentioned this uh, a couple of times over the course of this show, but both Steve and I have gone through significant career changes in the last year, yeah. year and a half. And and for me, uh, I, I made the final resignation from my my track coaching career uh, just back at the beginning of January. And um, again, in the interest of not oversharing, I'm not going to go into all the details of, of how and why that went down. But I came to the point where for a variety of reasons, it just seemed like I needed to, to let go of that part of my life, which was difficult um, and really something that I had been thinking about for several years but I really loved it, you know? Yeah. Um, and it was it was not easy. And uh, I had the option to stay. So sometimes we change careers because we're given a, an unfriendly, uh, some unfriendly <laughs> momentum. I'm <booting> the butt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I don't know if you know anything about that, but. There's the door. <laughs> Sometimes we're given an unfriendly boot in the butt and other times uh, it just kind of stinks and you, but you don't know if you want to quit, but mm -hmm. you think you do. So I did long story short. I did back at the beginning of January, wrote that resignation email and, and I knew that at, at some point there was going to be some grief that came out. And, uh, but I didn't know when, and I didn't know how, and then I forgot about it. And then, uh, a week ago I went to a pastor's conference down in Florida. So that should be, it should be a nice setting, right? You know, yeah, like yeah. all, you know, all my new friends and I like meeting new people and there's worship music and having a good time. And you're in Florida. <laughs> and I'm in Florida in February. <laughs> Although with the crazy weather here, like yeah. it was in the fifties here and in the upper sixties in, in Florida. So it wasn't, it was pretty great. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I didn't get to go to the beach. Yeah. Speaking of grief, I haven't processed that one fully. <laughs> anyway, to my story, I, uh, I was in the, the first full day that I was there, we were having a worship session and, all of a sudden, I had this thought, just this simple thought went through my mind. I used to be a coach. And the tears started to flow. And I, I don't even know how to describe that other than just grief. Yeah. And I was in a place um, 
sometimes you got to go to a different place to let the stuff out because everyday life just you know you're going through the routine and you're doing the stuff and you don't even think about it i hadn't thought for several weeks about oh i should i should probably sit down and have a good cry like i knew that but then i didn't think about it so then i you know i kind of like you know wiped wiped the tears and stuff and then i went to a what we call a breakout session and and my my pastor friend tyler said let let's rewrite psalm 23 not because we're trying to rewrite the bible my my friend tyler is very actually a conservative theologian and and he's not trying to write rewrite the bible but psalm 23 starts the lord is my shepherd and he said okay most of us here in this room are not actually shepherds so so pick a, an image or a metaphor from your own life that means a lot to you and like express the same thoughts of that of that psalm with your own metaphor and of course the first thing that i thought was the lord is my coach yeah and then i realized i'm not a coach anymore <laughs> that's not my metaphor anymore and i started to cry again so i sat there in a room with about eight other strangers and they were all busy rewriting their psalm and you know doing their beautiful thing and all i can do is sit there and cry um and that was weird <laughs> And I don't even know how to explain that mm -hmm. or where to go from that or what to do with that other than two observations. It felt really, it felt really good at the same time that it felt terrible. It felt really good to have a place where I could just, just cry. And also it just seems like there's a lot of mystery there. It seems like when you're processing grief, you cry at all the wrong times <laughs> and you laugh at all the times. Like, have you ever been at a funeral where people laughed? Now I'm trying to think if I have. <laughs> as far as like telling stories and stuff? Yeah, or, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure, yep. Um, you're at a funeral. It's supposed to be a sad occasion, but you start telling stories about the loved one. Yeah. And, and then all of a sudden, everybody's laughing. And then a moment later, everybody else can be crying. <laughs> I've been there. Yeah. Do you, do you have a specific? I mean, I'm thinking about my dad's funeral here a little over a year ago where I, I got up and uh, gave a... A speech. I don't know if it was so much as a speech as just kind of recalling some some memories and yeah, it's like yeah, we I had the the audience laughing and then it's like just kind of out of out of nowhere I got to a certain point and I had had my wife and daughter standing beside me um, as my backup and it's like yeah, I can't talk right now. This <laughs> <laughs> is so Stacy jumped up and and kind of took over uh thankfully uh but yeah it's it's hard it's you, you don't know when it's going to hit you it could be at a listening to a song or just talking or just thinking about you know you might wake up maybe you have a dream of somebody that that you've lost uh and just kind of hit you so you don't know yeah. you know when or where do you, uh, both of my parents are still still alive. Do you have have you dreamed about your dad since his passing? I am a very active dreamer, and yes, I dream about my dad quite often. Wow! So wow that. And sometimes it's good. Sometimes it's sad, and yeah. It uh, that that strikes me. Sometimes it's good. Sometimes it's sad. Sometimes. You're at a funeral and you laugh, and then all of a sudden you can't talk anymore. And and uh, I was not at that funeral, but I believe that you sent me an email with the uh, with yeah. the script of what yeah. you were going to say. Yeah. And uh, for those of you who who never heard that, it was it was a tearjerker and it was uh and it was a heartwarming laugh fest all at the <laughs> same time. And, <laughs> uh, 
hey, we're we're right. We're gonna we're gonna wrap this up here. Yeah. But I think what what go ahead. I was gonna say you know also before we do wrap it up, you know, you talking about coaching, and you know, I was in that kind of that same scenario here last year where, yeah, it was. It's you deal with grief when. If you've lost anything that's been a, a large part of your life, you know, I was in radio forever and it still hits me. It's like, man, I miss radio. You know, and I grieve over that, that I'm that I'm not on the radio anymore. But uh, you know, I've found a different outlet for it. So uh you'll find a different outlet for yeah. your coaching stuff. And and that's we were we were about to wrap up, but that's so profound. I gotta follow up on that. Um, part of part of the whole package here is just saying how weird grief is because uh, he, here you are with this this booming Steve Shetler media company and so we might think well you know that makes everything better and why would you ever feel bad about the loss of, of radio since this new thing is going so well but that's just not the way it works just the fact that now something else is going well doesn't mean that those those yeah. feelings resurface sometimes and then of course you get you get anger piggybacking on on grief and so that adds an interesting new dimension to life too is like you know I, i've left the other thing behind i'm doing so well why am i still sad <laughs> and angry about this other situation so now we we will wrap it up with just the the encouragement to you all um stay in the game be okay with having weird feelings and mixed feelings because it turns out that just seems to be part of of what it means to be human and then one final thing and then we will really wrap it up i want to take note of of what steve said about being at a funeral and having uh, uh stacy and riley with him it's so good to have some people get some people so that uh, so that you got somebody to stand with when all those feelings get all mixed up and you don't even know what the, what the heck is going on inside your own <laughs> brain. At that point in time, the best thing is not words or tears or laughter. It's people. So, yep. hey, thanks for being with us. Speaking of being people, thanks for being with us. Give us a shout in the comments. And uh, we look forward to being with you again soon. All right. That is Real Talk with... Aaron and Steve, again, brought to us by New Life Community Church in Wellman. We'll see you next week.